Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to another installment um, of the reviews that I uh, make of the 12 classics, 12, <laughs> 12 classics um, that I decided uh, to read this year. Uh, you will find the, the list in the description box of all 12 books, one per month, and I'm really happy uh, that so many of you join in, not with all 12, I mean, that would be a little bit overkill, I understand that, but, you know, uh, every month different people uh, join in with, with the classic, and I film a review video always in, you know, the couple of days before the end of the month, where I also cho choose, uh, chose, choose, uh, the, here with the, there are not that many left anymore, obviously, because it's already May, uh, the next one for next month. But anyway, uh, so far, uh, we read in January, um, Hana Crafts, The Bondswoman's Narrative, then the South African novel, uh, Olive Schreiner, The Story of an African Farm, was in uh, February, and last month in March we read Afra Bain, Oronoko, um, and for this month we picked this one, uh, Iola Leroy by Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, which I, I will call her Frances Harper, because that's what also the blurb says Francis Harper. So this book was first published in 1892 and Francis Harper uh, was born 1825. Um, she was a poet, an abolitionist, an activist, uh, um, novelist. Um, she was born in Baltimore to, uh, it says in, in her biography, a free black woman, but her father is not mentioned, but her mother died uh, when she was young and she was um, taken in and educated by an uncle. So she was uh, uh, early on writing poetry, uh, publishing poetry, um, and this book is one of her novels, fiction, about a woman, Iola Leroy, um, who was, who looked white, so she could pass as white, uh, but actually had um, a black mother. So the book is set when it opens uh, during um, the Civil War in the uh, 1960s. And even though Eola Leroy is the main character, the title character, she is not mentioned in the in the beginning. Uh, we encounter various uh, people, black people uh, involved in uh, the army, and then we learn that Eola uh, Leroy was kept as a slave somewhere, and then she is freed. Um, so there is a little bit of a spoiler here, but it, it's the first 20 pages. And then we go back. Um, the novel goes back 20 years before the start of the, uh, the Civil War and tells us about Eola Leroy's parents. So her father was a white um, slave owner and he married um, uh, his former slave, Marie, and Eola was their daughter, and they also had um, a son who was equally light-skinned. Uh, Eola and her brother didn't know that they had black roots, uh, so they were educated in the north, and then things happen, because I don't want to spoil it, things happen, and Eola ends up uh, as a slave, and she is then um, freed in the beginning of the book, by uh, the Union's army. And we follow Eola's life. Um, it goes back and forth a little bit between the, the time that Eola uh, was a young girl, a young woman, not knowing that she had, uh, um, uh, that she was part black, uh, and the present day, so to speak, during the Civil War and the end of the Civil War and she meets a couple of people and there's a love interest, but she's not interested and there's another love interest. So it, it's her life uh, during that uh, that time uh, until, not until she dies, by the way, but when she is a little older and the civil war is over. Um, I will say that, I, I, I mean, I really enjoyed, quote-unquote, reading the book in the sense that I felt 
uh, it's one of the few books that I read after the, the Bondswoman's narrative written by a black author during that time. I mean, she was born in 1825. Uh, so, and she wrote the book, she published the book after the civil war and after slavery, but still 1892, uh, and by a black author. So I, I feel that this is important to read. Um, I, and a lot of times with that type of classic, uh, you know, whether it's, um, even with Jane Austen, I'm, I'm not a huge Jane Austen fan, as you might know, but I'm still, I have read all her novels also because I feel it's, um, a, um, a historical document almost, um, to read about that time and what a female writer would write about during that time. And that, that's the same here. Uh, a black female author during, uh, slavery during the civil war. What, what, how is she writing about that? Um, and the, the one th thing that, that struck me again in this book, that the, the, the slavery part, I mean, it is discussed, uh, between two friends, uh, for instance, about how, whether or not, uh, you would rather be free and why or why not, uh, which is odd for me to read because th th that's not even a question, but I think in, you have to place that in the context of the time that it was written you know, to gain a, a broader audience. And I Iola herself, uh, not knowing that she is part black and her father being a plantation owner, a slave owner, she is in favor of slavery before she is enslaved herself. So th those are, I, I felt, really interesting um, aspects of the book. And the... Uh, how she is mistreated as a slave, we only learn from other people. So it's not that she tells us about her experience when she is enslaved and how she suffers through that period of time. We learn that from people outside, you know, who tell us how horrible she was treated and that she was, when she was freed, she was like a, a little bird, um, you know, anxious. And, and so it, it's as if she, the author wanted the whole, uh, horrors of slavery to be removed from her main character. And there is a lot of emphasis um, put on the issue of passing. So passing as white. Because Eola could pass as white. Um, and it doesn't help her that she is so light skinned because once it is known that her mother is a former slave, it doesn't matter that her skin is light. She is considered black and hence a slave. And on the other side of the experience is her brother, who is equally light-skinned, like I said, and who um, enrolls in, registers in the army, the Union Army, but then in the Black Regiment, even though he could easily pass as white and register in the White Regiment, which, which would, for his career and his advancement, would be a much better he would have much better prospects, obviously, as a white person, unfortunately, but obviously. But he doesn't want that. And she doesn't want that either. She doesn't want to pass. So the idea of, uh, it's one of the first books, I mean, in, in, in not that I, uh, for me, but in the timeline of writing about that, um, that really makes a point about this issue, that it's not, um, ethically, uh, right. If you are black to pass as white, that's not what you want. You want, um, uh, be f to be freed and to have equal rights, um, as a black person. So I thought that was a really interesting part of the book as well. I mean, if you talk about literary merits, I saw a couple of, um, you know, the criticism that this is not a from a literary point of view, it's not a fantastic book. 
Th that might be. I mean, who am I to judge the literary quality of a book published in 1892? It's well written, it's engaging, it's important. And like I said, oftentimes, uh, I, I don't think I ever finished that sentence, by the way, but I wanted to say uh, early on that oftentimes uh, that's how I approach classics. I mean, sometimes I come across a modern classic or even a classic classic and I it blows me away that from a from a reader's perspective purely by the literary aspect of it um, the new translation of Homer's um, Odyssey by Emily Wilson is one example that just blew me away as a reader um, but for me a classic is a, like I said a historical document also so I approach it mainly through that, with that in mind. Uh, maybe it's not the most fantastic novel, uh, but it, it's an important book. And I learned something and her perspective was interesting. Uh, she, as an author, I, I thought was a, uh, also a fascinating woman. But the way she deals with this uh, topic, uh, I felt was very uh, educational about how obviously it was supposed to be presented and especially the parts that are not presented uh, because I had that uh, same experience uh, with this one, the bondswoman's narrative, that slavery was not pictured as horrible or bad. Uh, it was more horrible is if you are a slave and you are mistreated but not the institution as such. And the way she approaches this is a little bit different, that she makes her black character, not knowing that she is black, uh, in favor of slavery in the beginning. So, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy that I read it. Uh, it's also one of the books that I think uh, would benefit from a reread. So I'm I'm certainly at at some point will reread this. I also can recommend if you haven't read it yet but are interested I can certainly recommend this edition because there is um an introduction um uh, uh, uh what is an African American classic by Henry Louis Gates who also um, edited uh, this one, uh, by the way. Um, there is also uh, an, int an introduction. So it, it's worth buying this edition because it gives you additional information. So this was our April read. Um, and I'm really uh, happy uh, that I read it and that I yeah, educated myself uh, a little bit more. Okay, now for the uh, the next one, I have uh, the the rest of the the books in here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, of course, because it's May. Um, so it, it's not not as m many possibilities anymore. But I will just pick one. This one. Incidents in the life of a slave girl. Incidents in the life of a slave girl. So it, we, we're staying with the theme. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not cheating here. It's just, it's every book is in here, but we are making our way through the literature of that, the uh, slavery. Um, so this one by Harriet Jacobs, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, uh, will be our next read in May. I hope you can join me. Um, uh, let me know in the comments whether you want to join me in May to read this. And again, I will, uh, let me see the calendar in May. I will probably make a video about um, uh, the, th this book and then the next pick around Pentecost, so around the 28th. Uh, of of May, so you have enough time. It's not a, a a huge book anyway. So enough of that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you are enjoying these this series with the twelve classics. And those of you who join me for one month or two months, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining and for taking part in the discussion. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.